I have far too many projects going on. I think I need to clean a few things up before I can start this video. And things are definitely starting to look a little bit better now. So with all of that mess being cleaned up now, I think it's time for another adventure into UXW Bill's IBM Personal System 2 collection. I'm not going to be talking about a specific computer today. Instead, I'm going to be talking about a particular accessory that went with an IBM Personal System computer. Specifically this, the IBM Personal System 2 model L40SX. As you can see, this is an early laptop computer and it has no built-in pointing device. However, much of the software of the time simply didn't need anything more than a keyboard to be satisfactorily operated. Yet it wasn't too long before software such as Microsoft's Windows Graphical User Interface and IBM's OS2 along with a number of other smaller players in the market soon drove the need for laptop computer users to desire some kind of a pointing device. Now when the laptop was at home on a table or something, a simple serial or PS2 port mouse could be used. But when on the road, another solution was definitely called for. And in time, laptop makers responded by actually building the pointing devices into their computers. Some of the first laptop pointing devices to be seen were simple trackballs and pointing sticks such as the one you see here. Later, the touchpad made the scene, and today most laptops and netbooks and similar things have touchpads, with a few computers still offering the good old TrackPoint and its clones. Yet there were still a lot of laptops out there that did not have a built-in pointing device, and their users did not want to be forced to buy a whole new computer just to get a pointing device. So computer manufacturers and the market responded with outboard pointing devices that were suitable for portable use. A computer mouse of the time wouldn't have been any fun to use as a pointing device without an appropriate surface such as a mouse pad. And of course today's flexible optical mice that can track on about anything simply didn't exist yet. The optical mice of the time required a special pad with a pattern on it in order to enable them to track. Well, IBM was certainly able to get into the market with such a pointing device, and here it is. You've probably never seen anything like this before. This is intended for use with the IBM Personal System 2 L40SX. However, it is a conventional PS2 port device that can be used with any computer. It's not like some of the mice that IBM shipped with the uh, early ThinkPads that were black in color and operated from a lower voltage. This is a conventional 5 volt PS2 port. Well, it's not quite a mouse and it's not quite a trackball. What the heck is this thing? It's actually both in one. And right now it is in the so-called trackball mode. That is to say you could lay this thing down on your desk wherever you happen to be and all it needed was a little bit of space in order to work and you had a trackball. The two big buttons at the bottom are the left and right click while the smaller ones are locking left and right click buttons. Let's go ahead and hook it up and see how it functions as a trackball. There it is all hooked up and ready to use. As you can clearly see, I have gone into Microsoft Windows now in order to demonstrate the pointing device, but also to demonstrate that the system can in fact be operated over the keyboard without any pointing device at all. However, as I'm sure you will soon see, it is much faster and more convenient to operate the system utilizing the attached pointing device. So let's go ahead and do that. This thing is in trackball mode right now, and since I am a southpaw, I've got it in the left-handed configuration. Now the mouse pointer on these older laptop displays, because of their rather low refresh rate, was sometimes easy to lose, and you can notice a kind of trailing effect here. That is actually an option that can be turned on within the Windows control panel to make it more difficult to lose the pointer. Times have certainly changed, and for the better in that regard it's much more difficult to lose the mouse pointer on a laptop now. 
There were many other solutions to this problem at the time. Some computer mice and other pointing devices actually came with supplemental software that let you use larger and darker cursors. And of course Windows 95 and NT 4.0 featured customizable cursors as well. Actually I think the customizable cursors may have been available in earlier versions of Windows NT. I don't know for sure. But as you can see here, I'm moving the mouse pointer around. I can click. can make things larger. Make things a little bit smaller. Basically anything you could do with a regular mouse, you can do with this. And as for the drag locking functionality, if I touch this small button up here, the mouse is now in drag locking mode and you can just kind of see the border on the window there and then in order to release the lock I'll go ahead and press this button and the clock window will move on the screen accordingly. I'll go ahead and shrink that out of the way and just demonstrate some of the other ways in which having an attached pointing device makes this a whole lot more convenient. Here's a copy of Microsoft Publisher 2.0 for Windows down here Let's go ahead and do something fun in Publisher. In amongst all these serious entries, you can see there's an entry for Paper Aeroplane. And back when uh, the Key Keeper and Bizarre Furhead were first being introduced to computers, and I gave them some old 486 machines, which should tell you just how long ago this was, they would not stay out of the Microsoft Publisher Paper Aeroplane Wizard and I eventually had to find a way to disable it because they were exhausting printer paper at a rather alarming rate. And of course we just go through this little wizard here. I think we'll go with the uh, classic. AM FM radio. See there was definitely a time when software was a lot more fun than it is today. And I'm back after a little unexpected handy cam battery outage. I think that this battery is getting weak. I've got to do something about that here in the near future. Let's see, I was making a paper aeroplane and had just chosen the AM FM radio option only to be told <laughs> that of course I was not being serious. Keeping in mind the dum-dum that's going to have to fold this thing, I think we better just keep it simple and head on to the next step. Of course we can have a nice color scheme. I actually remember the racing green one looking the best out of any of them. <laughs> and let's see, I think we'll skip the decal. <laughs> I'd say make 12, but I gotta remember this is a 20 megahertz 386SX, so I think we're just going to stick with one. <laughs> and we'll put the instructions on a new page. And then Publisher is going to create an expertly crafted paper aeroplane. Wasn't this supposed to be a demonstration about a mouse versus a trackball? Oh no! What a bummer. Don't know what happened to word art. Maybe I didn't install it or something. Anyway, carrying right along, there's the folding instructions for said airplane. Enjoy your flight and don't forget to recycle the paper. And of course a plug for another Microsoft program from the same time frame. But yeah, getting back to the point, this is convertible between a mouse and a trackball. So now that you've seen how it works as a trackball, let's see how it's supposed to convert into a mouse and how well it actually works as a mouse. Okay, so as previously mentioned, here is the mouse presently in its trackball mode, and it converts without having to turn the power off or shut the computer down or anything. So you can switch it into the mouse mode at any time. And the way you do this is to simply place your hand at the bottom sides of the mouse, and then press these two tabs on the top, and with a little bit of effort, there we go, you'll notice that it's popped out and the ball has become recessed. These two buttons have also become electrically deactivated and are now replaced by what were once feet. These are now click buttons for the mouse. So let's go ahead and give this a try and see how well it actually works. 
Now the tracking when it's in mouse mode leaves a little bit to be desired as this remains a hard rubber ball. There is no way to exchange the ball for a soft rubber one that is more appropriate for mousing on a surface. But as you can see, the form factor of the combination mouse and trackball has changed and now it looks almost like an IBM Personal System 2 mouse on steroids. And it tracks perfectly well. We can go down here and we can bring up the Windows control panel, open up one of the icons such as the fonts manager, and we can go ahead and preview a font if we so desire. Of course there's nothing really to do in there so I can cancel it. The buttons that were once available for drag locking are now unavailable. When you're in the mouse mode you have no ability to request a drag lock and as you can see there it slips a little on the smooth desktop. It would really work a lot better if I had it on a proper mouse pad. Yeah, it tracks a little bit better. I think it works better as a trackball, but it's kind of cool that it converts into a mouse. I almost forgot to show how this thing can be converted back into the trackball operating mode. So if you're wondering how to do that, here's your answer. It's really quite simple. First, you grasp the mouse, as I did earlier, from the bottom side, making sure not to get your fingers pinched in the uh, hinge area. And then using your other hand, you depress these two tabs and hold them down. When the lock releases, you can push the base back in, and the pointing device is once again in its trackball mode. Anyway, there you have it. Thank you very much for watching. And feel free to leave a comment if you have one.